So that's that. But because uh, I like you guys, you guys seem really nice. Well, I might have some good news for you. What? Yes, Lex Luthor is coming back. Uh, and also, kill me. Like, if I'm not just minding my own business and you kill me, you somebody shoots me, somebody like nice. my sister. You need to be nicer to yourself. You deserve to. Yeah. <laughs> and mom likes me better. Oh, of course. Tell us now. You guys had a moment. It's a beautiful moment. Yeah, she just tried to, to poison me. But actually, I, I wanted to ask you, Jessica, like, okay, you've got this whole huge playground. You've got, you've got the whole world of Supergirl fingertips, and they say, okay, we need a whole new season. We need a new season. Where do you start? Where, how, do you, how do you start coming up with, with stories for that? Testing. As Robert said, we are passionate about telling stories that reflect what's going on in society and real life, and we did that in a big way last year. And this year, we all sat around the writer's room and thought, what is a topic that's of interest to us? And uh, while we were talking, we were all obsessively in our, iPhone, uh, in our phones, um, not even looking at each other. And then it became self-evident that I think that's a topic worth exploring. And so once we started on the technology and how it has affected the fabric of who we are and our relationships, then it just soared. So, okay. so. Uh, so and that, that just makes the stories easier to write. You just they, all of a sudden they they just uh, you're like okay, Lena's got crazy eyeballs. Well, we <laughs> we, we have some pretty uh, rich characters, and we have things like evil brothers and t t telling their sister, you know, the worst thing about her best friend. So that sets us up for some story, and we come into it with a lot of you know material to mine. Yes, oh, and I heard you've got some new characters. Oh, we do, John. <laughs> we have a, we're so excited to welcome Julie Gonzalo to the cast as Andrea Rojas, the new head of CatCo. And we have Stas Nair joining our cast as William Day, a new reporter who's going to be a foil for Kara. Got it. And, and, uh, and I have another announcement. Oh, well, yes. That I've been given Bring it. permission to announce. Right. Bring it. This is a character that will be joining the show this season. <laughs> this Somebody is the Victorian speaker? Is that <laughs> <laughs> Something that I've been pitching since I got the role of Brainiac 5. Now you can't talk about Brainy without talking about his family. And so I thought similarly you can't talk about me without talking about my family. So my real life sister will be joining the show, Megan Rat. Female Brainiac Five. That's gonna be badass. Also joining the cast is uh, Melissa's new suit. Uh, uh, but I played Lenny Luther, 
uh, Lex Luthor's evil nephew. Uh, and, uh, I swear to God, I swear to God, it sounds ridiculous, and it was. <laughs> but my first day on the shoot, uh, I, I had a little bit of flying to do, which was very exciting. Oh, uh, I Yes, now she remembers how embarrassing yes. it was. Uh, my first day on the shoot, uh, the stunt guy said, okay, we're gonna cinch a flying belt on you, because it's a little tiny thing, uh, and it gets incredibly tight. They have to cinch it so tight so that, you know, it fits on you. So, just, you know, you may wanna uh, shave your butt. <laughs> so I did it. So, my first question to Melissa was, Oh my God! You still have to shave your butt? Uh, John, yes. you fell for that? I fell for that. <laughs> apparently, apparently it was a prank. How hairy is your butt? <laughs> I'm not gonna do it for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. By the way, Makad, I, I just want to say, I, I, Makad is obviously, the news has come out that he's leaving the cast uh, halfway through the, the season. Yes, uh, and it, it will be missed, obviously. But mostly, I feel like if I'm coming in halfway through the season and you're, what's up, dude? It's like you leave right when I get there. That's not cool. You can't have too many ball people. Well, that's a sign, bro. <laughs> I heard you were coming in, I was like, I can't do this. That's, that's not cool. That's not true. That's not, that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> but, but can, you know, obviously this, this, this will be kind of a bittersweet time for you, but it must, can you talk about, uh, reflect about uh, your experience on the show? Yeah, um, I, I, you know, I've been here since day one. And I can honestly say that I've never done a series before where this many people get along this well for, for this long. And it's really a lot tougher for me than I thought it was going to be because I love these people here. I love them. I truly, truly love them. They're my family. And, um... I'm just really proud of what we were able to accomplish in the last five years. Um, I didn't grow up able to see a superhero who looked like me at all. And the fact that these guys took a chance on somebody who does not look like Jimmy Olsen and made me him and then made me a superhero and then, love you, and then we, we actually dealt with racism context of bullying, and I, I get people that come up to me today with their kids and say, that episode changed our perspective of how we deal with people bullying my son. And I, I, this is the most important job of my life so far, so that's what's up. Thank you. the show, um, and he, I think, is, he's, he, it's so exciting that we get to redefine who these characters are, and Makai just kind of exploded every boundary around who this character was, and brought such strength and grace to it. We're so proud to have had him on the show. So, speaking of the, the evolution of a, a superhero, uh, Nicole, actually, has, you, you, this has been your season of becoming a superhero. How does that feel? Um, I mean, it's, it, it's been a really weird night. I, I can honestly kind of hardly believe that it's been a full year since I've been on this panel and since my casting of Dreamer was announced, and the past year has been so <laughs> insane and unbelievable. Um, and I still can't really believe uh, that that's what I'm doing. And just the past season of being able to 
become this superhero for me personally was so amazing and I was so fortunate to get to kind of have all these cool powers and a cool suit and get to work with so many cool people and tell awesome stories and then being able to hear from members of my community who have now also seen themselves as a superhero for the first time and they come up to me and they tell me how much it means to them and I, I, I don't know, all I can really say to them is I'm like, listen, I'm going through the exact same thing. This is my first trans superhero too. But I just, I'm like, y'all get to like be excited about it together. I get the scripts months and months in advance and I just have to sit on my bed and like, yeah, I just text Ozzy and <laughs> Andrea and Andrea and I'm like, you guys. I'm just so happy. <laughs> now, I have a question because, like, because I loved comics ever since I was a kid. Do, do, like, when you have the superhero lines to say, like, uh, like Dreamer has all the sleep puns. Uh, <laughs> do, do, do those feel good coming out of your mouth? Because I love saying. Yes, they do. <laughs> I love puns. <laughs> I have a like little notes app on my phone where I think of dream puns. And now I'm just waiting. I really just want to like... <laughs> Don't give it away. I really just want to... I've been practicing for this moment. <laughs> I really just want to like go up behind someone and knock them out and go, No screams, just dreams. <laughs> One more, I really want to kind of like, one of my favorite powers that I got to do, um, or I got to have as me was kind of her precognitive fighting style, um, where she kind of, you know, uh, preemptively like saw, you know, what they were going to do, and I really just want to punch a guy out and go, you know, I could say I could do this in my sleep, but I usually do. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, uh, Ozzy and, and Kyler, I wanted to ask you guys a question about that. So, so obviously this last season, you were dealing with uh, possibly adopting uh, a child on this one. Um, uh, is that going to go further in this season? Um, you know, this is... Kind of better at not being <laughs> so I'm going to let him That was obviously a very, you know, big story to tell. And, you know, um, it, is, it is something that will be explored and want to do very delicately, something that we want to treat very respectfully. Um, obviously, that is a, a big story point for Alex's growth and her future, and something that is absolutely in her heart and what she wants to do. And having met somebody that is, you know, on, on the same path and wants the same things, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to happen right this second. But to know that you're with somebody that feels the same way, that has the same dreams, it's all about making that journey now and kind of what that looks like. And, you know, everything is at risk and at stake and in crisis at all times. At any moment, anything could happen. And Jessica was, you know, we, we talked about this a lot, actually, at, at length about the, you know, the process of adoption and how realistic what happened in the show, you know, really is. That, you know, things can come and and be a part of your life and happen and like be handed to you and then in, you know within hours actually be taken away in the same moment and and that is a very true story to tell and so you know we wanted to keep the authenticity with that as part of Alex's journey but then also have somebody come in and be able to you know for the first time Alex not necessarily having Kara in those moments because Alex didn't know that Kara was Supergirl and so Supergirl was off and unavailable so she needed somebody to be able to talk to you about these kind of things and Kelly coming into the picture was just a perfect time to be able to introduce the like-mindedness and something that has that um, nurturing quality that can help kind of like guide and walk through that process. And so, you know, that is very much a part of Alex's, you know, desires and what she wants in her life. And it's going to be really exciting to see what that looks like. We've had some really cool ideas and, and some 
like interesting ways to introduce that into you know, the storyline, but we definitely don't want to rush anything, I'm trying to treat things very respectfully and tastefully and gracefully, and that's you know something that I'm obviously very passionate about, most of you that know me, you know that that's the case. Um, and obviously, you know, Ozzy is on the same journey. We're all very much on the same page in trying to keep things, you know, done well, but still really cool. And have fun with it. <laughs> yeah, you're kidding me, Benjamin. And I, and I, and Jessica did so well too. I think, as a woman, you, being a mother is such an incredible privilege. And when you have a desire to want to do that, it is a voice that doesn't go away. And adoption is not a linear experience, so to have this disappointment, um, and to, to witness somebody go through that heartbreak and still have hope, I thought was such a beautiful way of doing it and telling that story. And so many women are going through that. You two were so beautiful in that episode. Yeah, that was a great I, I cried. I, I watched in the editing room many times and cried every time. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm a big cry. Yes, I, on, on behalf of I'm an adopted parent myself, and it was handled just beautifully. I, you know, was, uh, I was very grateful that it was so sensibly handled. Um, I also want to bring up that uh, a couple of uh, a couple of the actors here are actually stepping out of the actor's chair and getting into the director's chair, which is our next two. Yeah. 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 David Harewood did last year. He's amazing. Yeah. 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 Two people would come up to me and say, he's crazy. With this way, and their, their eyes would just light up. Like, it was the most fun that they had all season. Yeah. Uh, so how, how was it for you, David? Said that, actually. It was a lot of fun. We've got a really, really great cast, um, a fantastic crew. Um, couldn't really ask for a better way to start my kind of directing journey than working with these guys. So it's been awesome. I really, really enjoy it. Looking forward to doing it again. For uh, 511, I should be directing again. And of course, somebody else is going to be directing again this year, or directing this year. So, this, is this going to be your first thing that you're directing? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, we had, John and I had a conversation because you directed Two and a Half Men, didn't you? Yes. And very good to he was very much integral in my, like, I've been wanting to do it, and I've been scared, and it's a, there's a lot of emotions surrounding it, but you get to know a show so well, and you get to know the characters, and the tone, and the way you know when it feels right, and when it feels good, and you also can't help when when I read the script. I can't help but envision what I think it would look like. Or, yeah. I'm so excited to try to bring my imagination to life with these people that I love so dearly. And I, I'm a little terrified, <laughs> but well, you understand being Supergirl is really really hard to begin with. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, she, this woman works so hard and has this. This incredibly sunny disposition the whole time. You're just like, I don't. She's hanging from wires for eight hours a day, and she's just like, Hey guys! <laughs> so, 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 yeah, I, and so this year she'll be directing with an incredibly sunny disposition. Next year she'll be doing catering with an incredibly sunny disposition. We made apples. <laughs> I'm just certain of that because it's, it is. We have remarkable energy. It's uh, you know how, how are you going to do that? I don't know, and I don't know how much I'll be in the episode that I end up directing, but. Um, I'm trying to get as prepared as I can if, in the case I have to direct myself, which will be a trip, especially if I'm on the wires. Yes. I don't know how it's going to work. Can you guys get me down? Can you see what's happening? Um, but we have an amazing crew, like the best crew. We are so fortunate. And our producing director, Jesse Warren, I've been shouting at him, and he's like, oh, Shout out to Jesse Warren. Shout out to Jesse Warren. He's here. He's here. Are you here? We love you, Jesse. Are you here? We're are you here? here? But he's awesome. Just rest assured, he's awesome. He's awesome. <laughs> um, I have not spoken with Kate McGrath just yet. Like, <laughs> I'm crying. Are you still annoyed with me? I'm sorry? Are you annoyed with me? I'm not. I've let it go. Now that I know I'm coming back to life. <laughs> and so I haven't let it go, because that was hard for me to do, and now they're bringing me back. Yes. That I'm a little upset. <laughs> it was hard for her, actually. Uh, when we shot that scene, that was a very difficult day. It was a, there was a lot going on, and John was so patient with me because I found it really, really tricky, and Jesse would tell you because he directed it, that there was so much emotion to play in such 
Because I wasn't really doing anything. I was being delivered a lot of information. And it was, how do you illustrate that your whole world has fallen apart by doing nothing? You just have to stand and listen, and you're so passive. And you've committed murder, and your world is done. And how do you let everybody know how much that's destroyed you? And you did. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we were, it, was, it was a tough day, it was a long day, and, uh, and I just kept talking. I got shot and I just kept talking. <laughs> there was more, by the way. I had about another paragraph and a half uh, that they mercifully... Um, bless Jesse, he just kept doing different camera sizes. He's like, hey, we're not done. This was just so good. We're just gonna keep going in. And I'm broken, and I'm crazy. Do you have any more in you? And I'm like, dude, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I have to say, I, I did argue a lot with, with Jesse on that one, and I've never watched it, but he does tell me it's wonderful, and I do trust him. You, you've never watched it? No, I can't watch it. You're so good. <laughs> she doesn't, she doesn't watch herself. I don't watch myself, and that one especially was so hard, and so, I mean... That's heartbreaking. The car is Supergirl. It broke me. I killed you. <laughs> it was it yeah, again? Yeah, it was Clearly, you didn't wait, 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 enough. It was, it was a rough day, yes, I'll give you that. Uh, but no, you, one of these days, I will sneak into your home and show it to you. That's weird. Yeah, so far, so good. It's weird, but it's the only way you can do it. Uh, or or I'll, you know, I'll figure out a way, I'll trick you somehow. And you'll see it, and you're, it's really, really wonderful. Well, you were very patient with me on that day, and Jesse, you were very kind to both of you. I couldn't have done it without either of you. And Robert and Jessica and our writers who, who put together a beautiful scene, a beautiful scene, and I'm forever grateful that that's. I mean, if I have to find out, that was an amazing way to shoot the scene that I finally found out that car is a girl. So, we're very lucky on the show. Right. I agree. Now, I also must, uh, uh, must speak with Miss Tessmacher. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, uh, because, because when you signed on to this, obviously, you didn't, he was not written this particular way. No. So, this was obviously a left turn for you. How did that feel? Incredible. I mean, when I first showed up, I figured I was a comic relief. I would do a few episodes, and that would be that. You made out with Mon Ell in a closet. <laughs> How do you feel about that? <laughs> I know. Everybody needs therapy. That's all I have to say. Whoopsie. I mean, she has a thing for. Bad men? Bad men? <laughs> <laughs> oh, complicated men. Complicated men. Not necessarily bad. Complicated. But it's been such a joy to play this character. She truly is an onion. And you just she just keeps unraveling and unraveling and there are so many secrets and so many deep, dark deeds. And we not only found out last season she was a double agent, she's actually in fact a triple agent. And that has been oh so much fun. And of course, getting to work with Lex Luthor once you showed up, that's an absolute dream as a fan of the original Superman movies. Um, and I've always been very inspired by Valerie Prime's work in the original in the original films. Yes, yes. And I'm lucky enough to have gotten to know her in real life. So I always wanted to approach this with tidbits of that, but I've, I've been able to grow and expand with this character as I currently expand. By the way, yeah, she posted a, a photo on Twitter and it looks like she's got a bun in the oven. Ladies and gentlemen. There's a baby. <laughs> this is not baby Lex. This is not baby Lex. Right. That we know of yet. The baby is bald, though. Yeah. <laughs> you do the math. But I feel so fortunate. So many of the people here are my true, honest, brilliant, beautiful friends. I love this show. I love these writers. I love you guys. And it's been nothing but a joy, so I'm so excited to be here. Full time, officially official. Now, actually, it is time to go to questions from you guys. So, where are you guys all located? Can I see you? Ah, oh, there we go. Very excited. Hello, Tess. Hi. Oh, hey, Supergirl. <laughs> um, my question is for everyone. Uh, do you think Lena is capable of becoming evil like Lex after like everybody lied to her? Except for Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, I don't think knows she's super cool, so she did not. Nor did James didn't lie to her. Or, uh, 
Everybody has that part in them that they can they can be the best person on their best day and they can also be the worst person on their worst day and that doesn't make them a bad person and it doesn't make them a good person, it just makes them human. And that's what I love most about Lena is that she is ultimately just human. She's flawed and she's brilliant and she's always trying to do the best and ultimately no matter what Lena does, I think she will always feel that she's doing the best she can. And yes, she has been given this is horrible news and it has destroyed her, but the question I think for season five, for Lena, is whether that defines who she is and whether that defines her relationships with all the characters on the show. So he knows. Oh, one more question. They held a little sign and said one more question. Hi, my name is Danielle. Um, first, I want to applaud you for having a show that is so strong in its feminism that it really encourages me to stand up to you. Um, my question, CW has done this great push about Dare to Defy, and we are open to all. So my question is, when are we going to see some plus-size representation? Soon. <laughs> it's a good point and uh, and point well taken. Absolutely. Yeah. Take your question. These guys listen. Thank you. So point well taken. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So is that it for the audience questions? Okay. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> now, now I think we're still covering. Yeah. I, but, we said everything there needs to be said. No, because I, I didn't want to, but because I did want to uh, go down the line really quickly with a lightning round of everybody's favorite moment on the show for this last season. Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, Jesse Rath's freak out uh, when he had every single human emotion in like four sentences was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. And if you could just, as an actor, explain how the hell you did it, uh, <laughs> I would be fulfilled as a human being. Really explain. I just kind of I planned out for what line I wanted, uh, uh, which brainiac would would be speaking each line. And so I had the OG brainiac in mind. I had a Keanu brainy in mind. I did a uh, an indigo brainy who tried to seduce the interrogator, but that got cut out. <laughs> and, uh, I think I, I did a, a French pass at that speech too, but that also got cut out. <laughs> But uh, I'm happy. I'm happy you liked it, John. We should hang out. <laughs> you can tell me how great I am. I can tell you how great you are. <laughs> be very smooth sailing. <laughs> but what was your favorite moment of the, of the season? I, ha I loved when um, Alex got grass. When, it, when Alex was, you know, crying over Supergirl and Supergirl got grass powers. Our friend Holly wants you. Yes. The grass. Take the grass, Kara. Take the grass. <laughs> Uh, the dreamer come to life finally and seeing, seeing her in costume, that was incredible for me. I liked being in Cosnia with you. Hey, yes, being in Cosnia. Uh, amazing Russian accent. Do we have any actual Russians out there, just out of curiosity? Anybody? No? Good, yeah. we don't want them. Awesome. Uh, amazing. Uh, absolutely amazing. I mean, you know, but you did just magnificently. Your Russian was beautiful as well. Thank you. <laughs> this is how it works. <laughs> they just compliment each other all day. It's a very, very convivial set. Uh, any other great moments that people uh, uh, loved? I love the sibling first episode where we came in and with Jimmy and um, Kelly and you and Lena. I 
thought that was really cool. And oh yes, that was cool. That was, yeah. really, that was, that was an epic cool. episode. That was. Yeah, wow. people dying. And, and yes, telling stories about dogs. There's madness. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, by, by the way, Ozzy's dog George is in San Diego. So you know. George, um, I love him. Ozzy's dog is wildly popular on the internet uh, and justifiably <laughs> so. This dog is amazing. He's definitely pooping all over the place right now. Yes, in our <laughs> hotel room. Sorry, George. <laughs> Um, well, that's actually all the time we've got for the uh, Supergirl panel. Thank you guys so much.